So, Mark, you started your career in the um, early 1980s, right? I did. Um, yeah, around the time uh, the IBM PC was just come out, the Macintosh had come out. So the personal computer, there's a Commodore, then the IBM, the Macintosh and the IBM PC. And uh, when you started your career, um, and there was a little bit of AI. There was that, uh, I think it was Elisa that was doing, um, sort of pretending to be a psychologist. There's some experiments like that. Now, um, what did you have any idea at that time? What was your, what, did you have any idea that would be where we are today? You know, it's a, it's a great question, Pat. Uh, first of all, I feel, feel very fortunate. So I have been in this industry, as you know, uh, over four decades, uh, and it's been an incredible period of innovation uh, because we've gone through the PC revolution, uh, the internet revolution, the mobile device re revolution, where we all have a, a computer uh, that we can hold in our, our, our hand and, and uh, internet of things or devices are, are smart all, all around us. Uh, and now uh, an AI era, which is going to be absolutely game changing. Uh, did I have a, an idea that uh, technology uh, could accelerate on that kind of pace? And the profession I chose of electrical engineering and specifically uh, chip design uh, would be so incredibly relevant to both provide the, the engines of that capability, uh, but also have societal impact, as we talked earlier, of uh, you know, how do you have that type of computation yet have it energy efficient? Um, I did not. I could. I uh, actually thought at the time that I joined at the right time, but I thought uh, by the time we would have proceeded four decades later uh, that we might have run into walls in innovation, that it might be a, a more mature technology that was slowing down. But I really learned something, Pat, over those four decades, and that uh, has affected me uh, greatly in, in what I do in my CTO role, and that is never underestimate the power of innovation. I can tell you over those four decades, a number of times uh, where working with my teams, we hit a wall and we'd have some of the teams saying, there's no way this can be solved or stop or gonna plateau or gonna slow down. Uh, but uh, what, we, uh, what we did is always we innovate, we find a way to go around the wall, to go over the wall uh, and to solve those tough problems in, in uh, very uh, unique ways. Uh, I remember when, uh, you know, my early days at at, uh, at IBM where we thought, oh my goodness, we can't break the micron barrier, one micron of uh, lithography scaling of the transistors. And here we are today at Angstrom. So orders of magnitude, more fine uh, connectivity or definition of these transistors. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, thinking uh, as, as I had the opportunity with Apple as we were, we were working on a next generation iPhone, uh, you know how to how getting how to get a camera uh, and the electronics and and as well as a beautiful form factor uh, over the next generation. Uh, we we would always hit numerous walls and again would innovate our way through it. And equally, you have to you learn over the time you have to collaborate very well to solve these problems. And that's the story of AMD. We've I've, I've been in this role. It's been fantastic over the last uh, ten plus years. And it just, uh, there's nothing better than being able to work with incredibly smart people and collaborate to solve really tough problems. Very thankful. Okay. And just one last question, if you don't mind, is what what, what about a young engineer starting their career right now? Could, do you want to take any kind of a guess? At, I, mean, I, I get your point about you're not really sure where it's going to go, but you want to take any kind of a guess what, about what they might see in the next 40 years? Well, I, I would, uh, I would, urge anyone in school today to uh, make sure that you are comfortable with technology. Technology will be just an indelible part of our lives. It already is today. Um, you know, I look at uh, uh, my uh, kids grew up with uh, uh, technology being, uh, you know, just part, part of their life. They're, they're all uh, use, uh, you, know, uh, the, uh, you know, social media and, and the latest of uh, software applications out there every day. Uh, but uh, that, that's really just the, the start for the new generation that's coming up. Um, they're, they're going to want to be very comfortable uh, with how you think about managing technology. Uh, as AI starts to permeate, uh, it can be a great augment, uh, but the, the new generation will have to really think through how it's that augment, uh, and yet like any new technology, uh, how is it managed for good? How do you build it in your lives to make it a more productive life, a more happy life, uh, you need to understand it. Where people do not understand technology, they're going to fear it. Uh, so I would urge everyone today to take time to understand a bit of what's 
behind some of the emerging technology uh, and make sure you're you're helping to make sure it's used for good uh, and that we have the right uh, policies out there uh, to ensure uh, again like any new technology that's not misused that's the best way to end this discussion i can think of <laughs> thank you very much mark um thank and you, Pat. okay and have a good day you too